We've had over 500 vehicle tests on this channel, and almost all of them have headlight tests. So if you want to see how the lights on your vehicle work, this is the right place to be. Mercedes-Benz sent us a GLC 300 SUV to drive. We're going to do a whole one-week road test on this in a separate video, but this is a night drive headlight test only. And we'll take these out in the dark and see how they perform. So let's go to it. All right, let's check out these lights, and I see we have the Mercedes emblem on the pavement when you open the door, so everybody will know what you're driving. And I see the cabin lights up real good with the interior lights on. Wonder how long this thing stays lit. So here we have the low beams on, and here's what the tail lights look like. A bit on the thin side, but bright enough. And here we have the emergency lights, a bit on the small side. Have some on the outside mirror. And a thin strip on the front. Now with the headlights off, are easier to see, of course. And from the rear, I can't tell if this is in focus. Losing some light here. And even with the cabin light off, the instrument panel and all the clusters light up pretty good. Get a real light show in here. And here's what the camera system looks like in the dark. We did this in the daytime video, but it looks better at night. And the engine information, horsepower and torque. Vehicle status. Each cluster lights up pretty good. And as we saw earlier, the entire cabin lights up. And as I mentioned in most of my videos, I do not like auto dimming mirrors. Unless you have a disconnect switch, and apparently we don't have one. If there's a way to disconnect it. I can't find it in the owner's book yet. Although I could put a piece of tape over the sensor hole. That's one way to do it. And here I have the low beams when I walk 33 yards away. Very bright, but a bit on the low side. Just barely clears the bushes. Go to high beam. Pretty potent in the middle. We got a bad dust storm coming in, so I better hurry up and get this done. Long distance, slow beam. Ooh, high beam looks up pretty good. Apparently there's not active headlights that swivel in the same direction you're turning the steering wheel. That's too bad, but no big deal. They're bright enough and have a good white spread, so the fact they're not active is not really a complaint. The low beams are more than adequate for city driving. And I suspect on the expressway, if you're not going way too fast. Here we go. High beam. Low beam. It's getting pretty dusty out here. Don't know if we're going to be able to see this far away. High beam. Low beam. And the low beam is doing a pretty good job of reaching out there at this speed. Around 60 miles per hour. Alright, the dark dingy street test. Low beam, high beam does an excellent job. Someone sent me a nasty email saying you can't say high beam and low beam, it's stupid. You have to say brights and non bright or something like that. Well, whatever. High beam brights, what's the difference? Okay, I guess we passed the test. I can't find any serious flaws to complain about. Oh, 
very nice vehicle. And by the way, I'm parking this vehicle in front of another vehicle. How much space do I have between the bumper and bumper? And according to our front camera system, or should say bird's eye view, I have about a foot and a half. Nice camera system to have. But then that's what we're paying for, right? Actually, you see a close-up that's better over here. That includes our night drive. You can see the road test video. Here's the link. Just click and watch.